Hello, everyone, and welcome to Scripture Snippets. Uh, welcome as we go on and we continue our study into the book of Psalms. Today, we're in Psalm chapter 5. <clears throat> psalm chapter 5, we have another Psalm of David. And it's actually, most subtitles here will specify uh, that the writer, David, uh, specified that this Psalm should be done with flutes. Uh, flutes in the Hebrew culture uh, signified uh, I mean, it could be used in ultimate pieces, but when it was done with a religious piece, when it was done with a psalm that was directed for worship to God, it kind of reflected prayer. It was an illustration of prayer. It was something to be lifted up before the throne of God. So we see we're kind of getting a precursor here of what David's going to go at in Psalm chapter 5. So open up your Bibles with me, and let's go ahead and begin reading uh, Psalm chapter 5. It says, give ear to my words, O Lord. So you see right away, we've got a prayer going on. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. He's begging God. And that's how, you know, it's awesome that we, we have that understanding that God hears us. You know, Jesus confirmed to us uh, that the Father hears us, that he loves us. And that's awesome for us to take. Uh, but we should be humble, just like David, and say, uh, you know, we're before King, we're before the creator of the universe, and I'm grateful that you give us consideration. And that's what he's saying here. Give ear to my words, O Lord, consider my meditation. Give heed to the voice of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I will pray. If you take this and you model this over to Matthew chapter 6, where we have the model prayer that Jesus Christ gave us, you'll see some similarities, especially with the beginning. Jesus was telling us that when we address God, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And we're supposed to recognize the holiness of God. We're supposed to recognize his eliteness, his 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 height as the creator, his height as the most holy that we need to recognize that we need to humbly come before God and do that. And Paul does that right here by saying, my King and my God for to you, I will pray. Verse three, my voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning, I will direct it to you and I will look up. Great piece of advice there from uh, the bits of scripture. How should we start our day with a cup of coffee, watching the news, um, hopping right into the shower? No. Let's start our morning, very first thing, in prayer to God. Not even Bible study or devotional. Let's begin with prayer. Before we even get to those other things, pray to God. Pray to Him. Ask Him for the guidance. Thank Him for the night's sleep that you've given. Everything. Pray to Him and communicate with Him. It's Prayer is a communication line to God. It's not just about talking. Sometimes we take control of prayer. Sometimes it's saying something and doing like David did here in the Psalms and Salah, just being quiet for a while, letting that prayer go through because God will reveal himself to you, not some mystical, special type of language, but you'll remember things. You'll remember your heart will all of a sudden remember how he's worked in your life. Your heart and your mind may recall scripture and how, what he's spoken and said to us. It's amazing. So start your morning. Verse three was great there. You shall hear it in the morning. So let's make that uh, devotion to ourselves. We'll hear it in the morning. Verse four, for you are not a God who takes pleasure in wickedness, nor shall evil dwell with you. Boy, our world needs to hear that today because a lot of people try to blame God for everything. And they say he's evil because he won't stop. You know, they say, well, if we, if we serve such a loving God, then why do babies get cancer? etc cetera, etc cetera. and they don't understand that all that was because of sin it wasn't god's fault it's because we've chosen this we've chosen to live this way um and it's amazing to see how he works and he heals and the power and there for you're not a god who takes pleasure in my business nor shall evil dwell with you the boastful shall not stand in your sight you hate all workers of iniquity he hates all workers of iniquity um it, not just some he hates he hates them all it's not just something he's immune of he hates all workers of iniquity so he despises that you shall destroy those who speak falsehood so they'll be destroyed people who lie and try to go with it the lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man and that term lord there in verse six is the the special name of god the jehovah god um the name that uh, the Hebrew writers 
um, actually shortened and put no vowels in because they could said that his name is so holy that no man should be able to speak it. The great I am uh, abhors the bloodthirsty and the deceitful man. Verse 7, but as for me, I will come into your house in the multitude of your mercy. In fear of you, I will worship toward your holy temple. Now, that's not a, a, a boogeyman type fear. It's a fear of knowing just how powerful God he is and understanding that he's merciful to us, that we serve a God who, if he wanted to in a minute, could end it all. But he's merciful and he's gracious. And it's that fear, understanding who God is, that we can be in awe of his grace and all of his mercy, even much so. We forget who God is. We try to replicate God in our lives anymore. We try to even put ourselves in that position. We try to compare, say, well, here am I, so this is how God should be, and that's wrong. Or, or we look at even uh, look up at certain people, like my preacher was this way, and that's how I expect God to be. But no, that's not how it should be. We need to be careful with that. We need to be wise with that. We need to understand who God is. And how do we understand who God is? We look at the pages of scripture. We see how he's worked throughout history. We have that understanding with God. And you pray. And we pray. He says in verse 8, lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. So he's saying, lead me, God in your righteousness and make my way straight because of his enemies. He wants to deal rightly with his enemies. And how does God deal? He's merciful and he's gracious. And we'll see this later on in David's life as well. Now, David also exercised justice. We have to understand that too. We have a just God. So there is a breaking point. We have to understand that. And too many Christians today don't want to talk about that, but it is true. We have a just God. There's going to come a point in time in our history, where God's going to say, okay, it's time. We've been studying a little bit of that in the Revelation study, but there's going to come a time. Verse 9, for there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is destruction. Their throat is an open tomb. They flatter with their tongue. Pronounce them guilty, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels, not by his hand, but by their own. Cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against you. And that's where David's crying out for the justice of God. Verse 11, but let all those who rejoice, but let all those rejoice who put their trust in you, faith. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Boy, ain't that, let those Also, who love your name, be joyful in you. You want to know a Christian who's growing because they take joy just at the name of Jesus Christ. They take joy at the name of God. Those things perk them up. They're not, uh, I got to go to church now or uh, I got to read my Bible. No, they take joy in those things. They love those things. They're the ones that are anxious to get out there and do ministry. They're anxious in their prayer life. They, They love it. They're ready. They're excited. They're ready to go. Joyful in you. Verse 12, for you, O Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor, you will surround him as with a shield. What a beautiful psalm. What a beautiful psalm. And I hope you've enjoyed uh, this series as we continue on. So if you have any comments or any questions, please feel free to reach out. I love you, my friends, and I'll catch you in the next video.